Good morning. I'm Mark McDonald, the rector of Ascension Episcopal Church. I'm so glad you're joining us for our worship today. Today's worship is morning prayer right to a sermon. Also, I'd like to announce that on October 11th, we will be opening our service. Many of you know that, some may not. We will have a sign-up sheet, and it is limited to the number of people to come. So please, on Monday, we'll send you a link to sign up for our service October 11th. It also will be filmed and posted. Um, so if you're uncomfortable making it to the service, we still will have that service. It won't be morning prayer. It'll be filming live of our Eucharist service that we hold on October 11th. So please join us. If you have any questions, contact us through my email or phone or website, which is www.ascensionepiscopalchurch.org, and, and contact us and we'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you for worshiping with us today, and take care, and God bless you always. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 80, verses 7 through 14. Let us read this psalm responsibly by half verse. Restore us, O God of hosts. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You prepared the ground for it. The mountains were covered by its shadow. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea. Why have you broken down its wall? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine. Right Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it 
and hewed a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of, Israel, of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more there is to do for my vineyard that I have not already done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now, tell me, or I will tell you that I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed. It shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command it to the clouds that there they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but he saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The first canticle we're going to read today is the third song of Isaiah. Let us read this canticle together. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your wall salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Church of the Philippi. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever signs I've had, these I have come to to regard as a lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through the faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or I've already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider this that I have made it my own, but this is one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. The second canticle 
that we will read today is the Song of Zechariah. Let us read this canticle together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of your salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priest and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. We have a doozy from Jesus today. It's a parable and it's a rather blunt one. Setting the scene in Matthew's gospel, you know, he's telling this, this, this parable. And if you noticed that he speaks of a vineyard, a vineyard uh, and he speaks of when the owner of the vineyard goes away, he sends back people to collect what is due and they kill his slaves, even eventually killing his son. Now, if you listen closely to the first reading that we had in Isaiah, where he talks about a vineyard, 
you know, with choice vines, and he even built a watchtower. And he had yielded grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And the Lord of hosts was not very happy with his vineyard because the people, the house of Israel, the people of Israel were the people who were in charge of taking care of this vineyard. And this in Isaiah 5, 1 through 7, which we read in the Old Testament, is related to what Jesus is talking about in this parable because you have to look at the audience of who Jesus was speaking of and also who Matthew, Matthew who wrote this gospel, who he was writing to and when he was writing it. One of the things that we know, we don't have an exact date, but we know that Matthew was written after the destruction of the temple. The Jewish temple was destroyed in 70 AD by the Romans. That was after Jesus' death. And that was a huge symbol of Judaism, the people of God, the people of Israel. And it had been destroyed. It had been destroyed. Today they have the Wailing Wall. That's about what's left of it in Jerusalem. And that was a huge symbol. So the people, the Jews of the time, the people in that time were living with a no more temple that had been destroyed. Their building had been destroyed. So they were looking at that from that point of view. Also, the people who would read this gospel and the Pharisees that Jesus was talking to, the people would be very versed in Isaiah. They would know about this vineyard, that the house of Israel with the vineyard, and that God gave them that vineyard. And when God went away and sent back his servants, that the house of Israel, the people who were not being faithful, were not living by the law, which they so honored and cherished, uh, that they would basically kill or maim or whatever the people that would come and collect the rents. So it is a metaphor that God gave the house of Israel this beautiful, beautiful vineyard and they didn't live up to it. They didn't, didn't welcome, they strayed away. And Jesus was telling him this parable. And what he said is that even the owner of the vineyard would send his only son back and they would end up killing him. And that's not the end of the story. And there's not, there is hope in this story. But what it's talking about, what it's talking about is very important to understand the historical context. And those religious leaders of the day, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, would know full well that Jesus is talking about them. And that Jesus is talking about himself, being that son that will eventually be killed and rose from the dead. And they would correlate that back to Isaiah and really realize that Jesus was talking about him. And on many layers, this is fascinating because this kind of sets the bar where Jesus goes and becomes crucified, gets arrested. This is one of those moments where Jesus basically calls him out and says, you are the people who are killing the master's son, the master's slaves by not living, by not living as we are told. And God is acting some way, somehow, a new way. And it's not just a new way. He's acting through this person of Jesus, which will be me. And I'm the person that will be the chief cornerstone of the church, of the people of God, that you rejected. Just as he says this cornerstone, the one that is rejected becomes the cornerstone. So this is a passage rich with, with all kinds of things. The Pharisees hearing it, the people hearing it, realizing that they were given this vineyard as the people of God through Abraham, where Jesus made his covenant with Abraham, Moses, no, all the people in the Old Testament. Isaiah talking about this vineyard and that it's up to us to, to have good fruit. It's up to us to, 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 be, to, to give to God what is his and not turn our backs on God. 
to take care of the vineyard God gives us. It's up to us to do what we need to do. And then Jesus comes and says that tells them this story of the vineyard that I'm not doing, that they're not doing what they need. They're not only not doing, they kill the, the servants of, of the master who comes and they even kill his son. And it resonates because those people, the Pharisees know he's talking about him. And what do they say? They want to kill Jesus. The people that was Matthew's writing knows that he's talking about them talking to them because the Jewish temple has been has been destroyed, and Judaism is is uh, is fine. It's great religion. Don't get me wrong, but they know that things are not right and that their life is shattered with no temple, and they have to find new ways of worshiping. And that guy's saying that yes, you killed Jesus, and Jesus rose from the dead, and God has spoken to us, opening us all to the life of God, including you, including Gentiles. And it's not based on pharisaic rules is not based on following law as we read in saint paul today he said he was one of the most vigilant pharisees the most vigilant jews he persecuted christians he followed the law to the t but he realized that wasn't where it at it was faith in christ jesus so we have paul we have isaiah we have the gospel and saying this new thing this new thing in the person of Jesus Christ, God being fully incarnate in Jesus, that through the faith of Christ, through believing in Christ, through believing that God is with us through Jesus Christ, that rejected person who was died on the cross, God rose and it became the chief cornerstone opening God's grace to all that wasn't necessarily based on law, but was based on the love of God, God reaching his loving hand on the hardwood of the cross, extending God's love to us all and opening the way of love, justice, mercy, reconciliation, grace, hope, joy, all of those gifts of the spirit that he so freely gives us. And that's what we have today in these readings. And we also have it today in these readings as this starts Jesus on his path to the cross because he challenged the leaders of that day. And those leaders took offense. And those leaders who were basically those wicked tenants ended up killing Jesus. And that never is the end of the story because God, the incarnate God in the person of Jesus, God raised Jesus from the dead opening life, conquering death and sin, and allowing all of us to participate in the kingdom of God. And in that, we can always be grateful and, ever, ever, and know evermore how much we are loved by our God. And what we need to do is show up with grateful hearts and give the God best we can every day, knowing that through Christ we are loved beyond anything we could possibly ever comprehend. And for that, we can all be extremely grateful. In the name of God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The service today will continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us Stand and all say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A collect for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace. We pray for Donald, our president, Greg, our governor, Sylvester, our mayor, and for leaders of all nations that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, your Lord. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, you comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for Aberlene, Jane, Ralph, Frank, Anna Lupe, Kathy, Alice, Francis, Jackie, Annie, Landon, John, Dion, Sandra, Clara, Corey, Mark, Edward, John, James, Jack and Jean, Gina, Jean, Lena, Bob, Shannon, Joni, Lance, Lee, Lucia, Barbara, Angela, Carissa, 
Carol, Pete, Maria Isabel, CJ, Margaret, Gretchen, Mary, Henry, Mary Carolyn, Louise, David, Melissa, Anthony, Valerie, and those known privately to us. We pray for all those afflicted by the COVID-19 virus, those who care for them, the friends and families of those who have lost the battle, and for all doctors, nurses, and medical personnel who are caring for the sick. We invite your prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, presiding bishop, Andy, our bishop, Mark, our rector, and for all clergy and people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. And in the Diocese of Texas cycle of prayer, we pray for all saints of Stafford, Calvary of Richmond, and Christ Church of Eagle Lake. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us 
all say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.